We've been talking about bail and discovery and criminal justice reform and increasing crime rates for the past almost three years. Now why? Why won't it just go away? Which I can guarantee you is what my colleagues in the majority would love if it just went away, if we just stopped talking about it. We can't stop talking about it because it's not going away. Because New Yorkers of all stripes, of all ethnicities, in all communities, they're talking about it. They're worried. Every day there's a new video, a new report, a new victim. And our colleagues in the majority not only have no ideas, they put forward no solutions. We're just trying to scare people, as if murder rates are just a statistic to use to scare people. That's a real statistic. That's a real data point. When these folks wearing uniforms go out, their jobs are immeasurably more difficult today because of policies enacted here in this building. It's not a scare tactic. It's not a, 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 a talking point. And as proof of that, despite all the statistics that have been mentioned, just two weeks ago, or a week ago, the governor released her 10-point plan to fix bail. Now, what was it? What was it that suddenly she had an epiphany that this needed to be fixed? Was it she was booed mercilessly by the New York Rangers fans? Was it her poll numbers? I'll tell you what it wasn't. It wasn't the crime rates we've been citing, because those have been going on for years. And that was never enough to get her to say, we need to do something about it. It wasn't until the political numbers came back that was the driving force. And that should tell you everything you need to know about the folks who are supposedly trying to fix this. The reality is, the folks who are standing next to me wearing uniforms and our DAs, they have to stand here at a press conference because they're not welcome in the room to actually make this law better. They weren't welcome three years ago, and they're still not welcome. And that should tell you everything you need to know about the people who are trying to fix this law. So the truth is, we're going to keep talking about this, and New Yorkers are going to keep talking about this until it's actually fixed. Now, I'm not holding my breath because my colleagues in the Senate and the Assembly, they've said, we have no interest in fixing it. We have no interest in making the necessary changes. They're not interested in making New York a safer place. They're interested in less victims. So we are here today. We continue to try to advocate for changes, but the truth is, I don't know why I'm going to trust the folks who broke this system, who overturned it. This wasn't reform. This was an attempt at revolution, a political criminal justice revolution. They wanted the system to be overturned. They didn't like the way the system was working. They don't trust law enforcement. They don't trust DAs, and they don't trust judges. And I believe New Yorkers aren't going to trust them when it comes to this issue at all, including much longer uh, later this year. So with that, I want to thank my colleague, uh, Assembly Leader Will Barkley, for having this press conference. I want to thank my colleagues who have been standing up here talking about this issue for years. We're going to keep talking about it. Let's hope they do the right thing in the budget. But regardless of whether they do or not, we will continue to talk about this issue until it gets addressed. Thank you very much.